Good morning folks, we have had the most spectacular sunrise today. I'm feeling full of inspiration from the colour and the warmth of its rays that have just flooded the landscape. We've now got this gorgeous golden light, although I seem to be parked in a little bit of shade. Um, and I'm in Glastonbury. So if you haven't heard of Glastonbury for its festival, you probably heard of it for its tour. So this is Somerset, Southwest England. I live about 40, 50 minutes away, so I've just driven up today. It's quite a sleepy Sunday morning, which is great for me. Hence why I've managed to get this little parking spot. Um, but what we're going to do today basically is head up to explore Glastonbury Tor, real famous place. You would have seen pictures from it. Everyone knows Glastonbury Tor. Um, and then, then, this is where it gets a little bit, don't know how this is going to get. Um, so I'm going to head the other side of Glastonbury Tor. And I basically just penciled out this route on my map, um, the circular route that's going to take us up into the Somerset landscape through the fields. I uh, will see some of the, the dikes and the dredging going on, maybe. Um, just around the fields here it's real flat somerset level sort of area and then we'll come back around into glastonbury itself check out the high street i'm not really one for shopping but it's a real interesting place there's lots of cool shops and uh i don't know if they'll be open it is a sunday but we'll see what we can see so i think without any further ado i'm going to head outside into the three degrees yes <laughs> this is my kind of temperature um i'll get my boots on and we'll head out walking so three two one go Woo! <laughs> Whew, it is beautiful out here all right so i'm leaving the car my first mission then is to head out and find glastonbury tour itself which i know is somewhere over there um, i'm kind of near the rural life museum here in glastonbury but if you can't find anywhere to park there's loads of parking near glastonbury abbey which is kind of in town so head there uh, you do have to pay for parking there I don't know about Sundays actually, but um, it's just easier than driving around around trying to find somewhere you can park for free. But I'm cheap and uh, I like to save bucks where I can. So here we go, I've got my free parking. Let's find Glastonbury Tour. Well, Peace Garden. I like that. <laughs> okay, so we've got the sign here saying Wellhouse Lane and if I just walk a little bit further up I'm pretty sure this is the way I'm going to head to get to the top of Glastonbury Tor, a scheduled ancient monument that's full of myths and legends. Yeah this will do, looks like a path, I'm going to follow this. <laughs> oh wow! Just round the corner and you can see St Michael's Tower just popping into view there. Let's get through this gate. Woo. And what we've got here is a National Trust Glastonbury Tour sign. This whole area, as I just said, is a scheduled ancient monument owned by the National Trust. St Michael's Tower itself is a grade one listed building. And what we've got here, I love a good billboard. <laughs> Welcome to Glastonbury Tour, one of the most famous and sacred landmarks in the West Country. Who are? <laughs> From the summit at 158 metres, you can get amazing views over three counties, Somerset, Dorset and Wiltshire. What is the Tor? Tor is a West Country word of Celtic origin, meaning hill. The conical shape of Glastonbury Tor is natural due to its rocks. It is made up of horizontal bands of clays and limestones with a cap of hard sandstone. The sandstone resists erosion, but the clays and limestone have worn away, resulting in the deep slopes. And you can see this depiction here. It's just the incredible shape. So we're here, as you can see, and what we're going to do is just head up to the top. And then, from the looks of it, we've got a lot of steps down the other side, and then we'll head off on our adventure for the rest of today. Let's see how this goes. The climb to the top of the tour is solid and easy to follow, and if the views aren't enough to keep your attention, there's plenty of interesting rivers, signs and statues along the ascent. It's wonderful how every step transports you higher and higher above the level of the rest of the landscape. It's pretty hazy today, but I have a feeling we're going to have some good views. Whoa. 
we're almost at the top. There's a little breezy up here, certainly very fresh, but uh, actually just climbing up at a little bit of a pace gets your heart rate up and then you work up a bit of a sweat. Just a bit though, <laughs> it's not quite that warm today. And here we are then, the top of Glastonbury Tor, 158 meters above sea level. It's a Michael's Tower here with a The name Tor is an Old English word referring to a high rock or hill. Glastonbury Tor actually sits in the middle of the Summerland Meadows, which is part of the Somerset Levels. The Welsh word for the Tor means Isle of Glass, originating from when the plains were flooded and the Isle became a peninsula at low tide. St Michael's Tower on top of the Tor is a Grade 1 listed building and scheduled ancient monument. Evidence of buildings at the top of the summit have been found from the Saxon and early medieval periods, and the tower that remains now is all that was left of St Michael's Church, built during the 14th century. Woo. It's good to be out of some of that wind. That's properly icy. <laughs> oh, it's amazing up there at the top. Never know at the end of the walk I might head back up since we parked so close, it's unbelievable. Um, can't really feel my face, so. I feel like I'm dribbling everywhere, but I don't think I am. <laughs> um, I'm heading down in case you haven't gathered, and uh, hopefully at the bottom we'll be out of the wind a little bit more, and I can get the map out and I'll show you where we're going today. So that's one of the main highlights. <laughs> we'll see what the rest of the walk turns out like. Oh. <laughs> Nearby the tour is Avalon Orchards four traditional apple orchards, which apparently, from time to time, you can find a dragon there guarding the sacred apple trees. Huh, we're just by the road here, and there's this rock, which might be like a prayer rock or something. Shows, uh, they look kind of Celtic to me. And then what's this? It looks like a bell, but I'm not sure. I didn't know it at the time, but the rock is actually a Millennium Standing Stone, erected by the people of Glastonbury. Okay, so as promised, let's have a look at the map. We've just come out onto this little B road, so it's a yellow road on the map. Glastonbury Tour's just up there. And basically what I want to do now is follow this road right through to the dead end, and it kind of follows this little track through to Norwood Park Farm. And then we're going to keep going, keep going, keep going. So we're continually walking east all the way to West Pennard. And then basically find my way kind of along this main road or whatever, along Page Lane, then Pennard Lane. So we've got a bit of road walking and then we're going to head out onto Harty Moor. I like the name of that. <laughs> and we've got this big old bridal way just following the straight lines through the field boundaries and the moor, uh, crossing over the Wales Road, which is a big A39 road, and then continue along Fountains Wall to a boundary stone if we can see that that'd be nice then along black pit drove and then basically from there just head into glastonbury and kind of find my way along the main high street and then all the way back to uh glastonbury abbey and the rural life museum kind of near where we parked although i didn't see that so i don't know where that is but that's the plan i think uh just grab a drink and then we'll head on along the road so we've got a bit of road until we hit the footpath and then into west pennard and then all the way back round. let's go Woo! Honestly, this kind of weather just brings me so much joy. My soul just wants to explode with gratitude for being alive. The, the icy, refreshing air, the clear blue skies, the golden leaves, and of course this light that just covers the landscape. Oh, there are no words. I just love it. Okay, the joy has gone for just a moment. We've got some fly tipping here. That is pretty heartbreaking to see. I mean, 
it's all gonna let, end up in landfill anyway but why why leave it here people completely illegal completely disrespectful to the landowners in fact you know a lot of that is wood you could just burn that that's pretty upsetting really So pretty much down then on the flat stretch now most of this walk is flat let's be honest which is is great if you're kind of looking to get into walking and you just want to build up your fitness nice and gently uh, so just over there is middlewick farm caravan site so if you wanted to stay near the tour travel down you could possibly check that place out don't know what it's like i just know it's on the map and uh we're walking through this farm here which i thought was a caravan site but isn't so walk through the farm cross over and join the footpath and then we have plenty more flat walking to do today but uh it's great really enjoying it and this is all part of the somerset levels so 170,000 acres of kind of marshy fieldy land that's renowned for its incredible uh bird life actually migrating species come from all around the world they stop off here or well, certainly from all over england <laughs> and stop off here and um, we expect to see some great species today i don't have my long lens but i'll certainly report back whatever i see Here's the B road, so we just want to go left and then almost instantly there should be a turning on the right. That looks hopeful there. Essentially a stile or a gate. Let's see, can we get through this? Public footpath, there we go, let's do it. Ooh, chickens. Hello chickens. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> We'll let ones come in to say hello. Hello chickens. Another gate, another sign, and a rough sort of trail thing. Some old farm track, we'll follow this. Okay, so at this point the path splits. There's kind of three main routes. One that goes that way, we're gonna follow this and apparently some lion. I don't know what that's for. Uh, so we follow this track and it should turn into a footpath which potentially might get a bit muddy at this time of year. We'll see how we go. Oh, this light. <laughs> it is amazing. <coughs> Whew, open fields, nice. Oh, wow, look at that. Turn around. There is Glastonbury Tour. Oh, there's quite a lot of people on top. What a view. Time for a quick snack. Mm, love a good banana. <laughs> Ooh, walk away. Oh, yes. Look at this. <laughs> that is an absolute score. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, I'm going back. Oh, it's slippy. Okay, take two. This is why I walk alone. No one would dare walk with me. Right, onwards. Look at this open space. It's amazing. And then uh, just heading for this style over there, kind of hoping it's ours. It is now, anyway. <laughs> There's a lot of footpaths around here. Erected by the Mendip Ramblers in 2002. Still following the lion. So that farm there should be East Street Farm with any luck. Ooh, I'm any good at this whole navigation thing. Huh. Can't bother to go through that. Let's give this a go, shall we? Do you want some barbed wire? <laughs> We're good. We're good. Oh. Wonderful. Okay. It's like an escape plan. Come on. Okay, this could definitely be easier. There we go. Woo, we're free. Right back up again now. Huh? 
alongside the sound of a helicopter. I just heard a load of starlings and looked up and they all seem to be filling this tree. Although a few have flown away since I've stood here. Just listen to that chatter though. <laughs> They've got a lot to say. So we're following this lane now, right into the sun. Should really put my sunglasses on. Uh, we've left East Street Farm behind and I'm heading towards this big A road, A361, something like that. Don't correct me on that. <laughs> and uh, what I was going to do is head around through West Pennard, which actually derives its name, interesting fact, from the old English word uh, Penard, which means high hill. Any guesses where that's come from? Glastonbury Tour. Um, <laughs> but I've decided I'm going to follow the main A road just for literally about three quarters of a mile. No, not even that far. About a third of a mile uh, until I hit that page lane and then we'll head off of it. So risk life and death along this road. Not sure how busy it'll be. Got to get there first. Okay, here's the A road. Looks like they have a pavement, which is a bonus. Let's see how far we can get with this. Hey look, I found an even bigger lion. In fact, the red lion. Free house. Look at this. <laughs> the red lion is a traditional country pub and B&B. The main building dates from the 15th century and boasts plenty of character. Just spotted these guys metal detecting. Obviously the field has recently been ploughed up and the grass has come through, but it's a great time to find pieces of metal that have been pulled to the surface. I wonder if they found anything. <laughs> Here we go then, Page Lane. That's a good sign to see. So we'll follow this away from West Pennard. Goodbye West Pennard. And on back west towards Glastonbury. There's views up over Glastonbury Tor over there. Bit of a distance now, but it still stands out like a sore thumb. It's kind of uh, so simple, this walk today. It's just basically like a rectangle. There's a lot of straight line walking. We've got this stretch on the road as well. But actually that's okay because, you know, some walks don't have to have points of interest every 200 meters or so. Sometimes it's nice just to be outside to enjoy the air, the, the, the movement that you're doing, if you're getting your heart rate up or not, just to actually be active and feel your body and wholly present in the moment. And for me today is one of those days. Obviously there are some interesting things to see along the way, but we have got some kind of arguably quite monotonous stretches of walking, but they're only monotonous if you let them be monotonous. It's all about your perspective and how you tackle and approach these stretches. So for me, uh, I'm just listening to what I can hear, different birds trying to identify them, the wind in the trees, the <laughs> taking in the cloudless sky, even just looking at my shadow and realizing that that is me, that I am a real life person, I have a purpose, I'm part of a bigger picture. And I know it all sounds real deep, but actually I think this stuff should be our foundation. This should be the surface stuff that makes us who we are. And uh, I have no fear in sharing that. In fact, it's an honor for me to be able to share it. And when I come out here, I just feel 10,000 times more inspired to be the best that I can be. I always leave walks feeling amazing and I just want to shine outwardly and motivate others to head outside and spend more time in the wild as well. Every single field has people metal detecting in. So cool. Hi there. Lovely day for it. Yeah, have you found anything much? Yeah. Oh, you'll find it. <laughs> UK History Finders Rally. Oh, cool. So it's actually an event. The event was organised by the UK History Finders Southwest, a government approved organisation who follow a very strict code of practice. That is a lot of mud. <laughs> yeah, you're stood in it.
here we are then this is the turn off point from Pennard Lane which we've been following so we've got one path going that way and we've got one going this way so it's a bright away on the map uh, and pretty much just a straight line west all the way to Glastonbury but we're heading directly towards Glastonbury Tor so this little weir here as well which is neat Ooh, was, oh, wow that was a dipper I don't know if that was on camera but that was cool <laughs> This is really nice, heading directly towards Glastonbury Tor. What a fantastic view. And then we've got this footpath, which could probably be quite muddy later in the season, but it's certainly okay now. And then the waterway here to my right. And actually I'll probably start to hold my breath and be as quiet as I can, because I might see some water voles along the edge, or at least signs of them. We'll keep our eye out. Oh, it's a cormorant. Big black bird. Cormorant. I made him jump, he made me jump. <laughs> that is a big old tree that's come down. Now that's an ash tree. Wow, it's literally split in two. Whoa. That's pretty gnarly. I so wish I brought my long lens today. I didn't even think about the possibility of seeing different birds. I've both seen herons and egrets and some kind of buzzard. I think it was just a common buzzard, but around here you get honey buzzards as well. And uh, dippers, cormorants, all of these birds just flying over my head and I can't really capture them to show you. So I'm sorry about that, but I've got the little bits of specks in the distance. Hopefully you can make out it's a bit of a bird. The fact that it's in the sky is a bit of a giveaway. We're just coming up towards Heart Lake Farm, or one of two Heart Lake Farms. There's another one further along. The ground is pretty gnarled up by the cows. We can also see I've changed hats. We're out of most of the wind and uh, it's getting a bit warm. So feeling good now. Let's keep making progress. Oh, wow. Look at the starlings on the wires. Whoops. <laughs> huh. That looks a bit overgrown, but I need to get across that somehow. Doesn't seem to me as if this stretch is used very often. Um, okay, let's just keep going. Yeah, that's not happening, is it? Over we go. I'm hoping I can cross over again somewhere else because I'm supposed to be on the other side. Unfortunately, I don't believe I can see a bridge at all to cross over and it looks like there's going to be trees in the way pretty soon of our trail so this might mean I'll have to forge my way through some fields I can see the main road up ahead but it is still quite a way just going to have to make this work really but basically next time I need to be on that side so I think it means I need to go through the farm as opposed to just stick on around it also, that bridge should not be grown over. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, Alright, see what I mean? You shall not pass. <laughs> you got this great vegetation. And uh, I can see the footpath on the other side, but there is no way I can jump that. I thought about it a lot, but that is not happening today. <laughs> or any other day for that fact, no matter. But what we've got here is this little bridge so i'll cross over that but it does mean i'm on the other side of not one but two waterways i'm on the wrong side but the main road you might just be able to see in the distance there the cars shimmy on by that's all i've got to try and get to so let's see if we can forge a new way
There he goes. Oh, wow. What a beautiful animal. <laughs> that was pretty neat. He was literally like right there. And like it took me a while to even realize that it was a deer. So I whipped my phone out to video. <laughs> and then before I know it, he jumped across and galloping off into the distance. Oh, come on. <laughs> right, so the A39 is just in front of me. And once again, <laughs> there is no bridge to get across to it. Uh, <laughs> so there's a bridge there, except we're on the wrong side of this. Oh, hang on. There might be something down there because this looks like a footpath going up there or a cycleway. So let's head down to that bridge, see if we can cross over and then cross over the main A road as well. Glastonbury Tour still shadowing us. That sight never loses its awe. Yes, there's a bridge, but this is tied. Oh no, it's not, hang on, we can do this. <laughs> okay, yep, I'm stuck. All right, we're going over again. No, that's way too wobbly. Over the fence. <laughs> How many times have you seen me do this today? <laughs> More than enough. Oh. Okay, oh, we made it. A39 cycleway. Let's just head back to join the footpath that I couldn't seem to be on before and then cross over the main A road. The cycleway follows the A39 all the way to the cathedral city of Wells, some eight miles away. So I'm just looking at the map. There should be a path just there, but it might be a little bit further up from the looks of it actually. Hopefully. <laughs> Aha, there it is. Here we go. Heart Lake Farm. We're going through here. Oh, let's get away from that road. Okay, so I'm just looking at the map again. And uh, I've noticed behind me there's a little B road which actually, there isn't, so I'm par I'm opposite that. So I think what I need to do is walk back along the A road for a little bit till I actually hit Park Lake Farm and the footpath should go through the farm. And if that doesn't work, I think all I have to do is follow the main A road back down into Glastonbury, which would be a real, real shame, but there are some B roads that I could follow. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, this is a footpath, but, I'm not convinced it's the right one. That's where it should be. Okay, so change of plan for today then. Let's cross over whilst it's quiet. Uh, I'm gonna follow this cycle path then down into Glastonbury or just sort of forge my own way back into town. That is a shame, but basically it's just more walking through the straits of fields to get away from these cars. Oh yeah, I found a new road. We're gonna follow this instead. Glastonbury's that way, we're going this way. Why? I don't know, why not? <laughs> Um, so this runs parallel with the footpath that I wasn't able to figure out. Um, so you can just follow this and basically just head back down to Glastonbury. But it's just nice because it takes us away from the road for a bit, further out into the stillness of the marshes. And uh, I'm quite happy about this. So we'll follow this as far as we can and then we'll head back round to Glastonbury. So we're following Chasey's Drove and then what I'm going to do is head south along Common Moor Drove. And I'm just wondering actually whether the roads are called droves because they're used or were used and still are used to move cattle around between the fields. 
ancient drove roads. Who knows? I really like names. They give a lot away. Wow. Look at the light sparkling on that water. This looks kind of hopeful. Might be our turning onto Common Moor Drove. I mean, it's a road and it's going the right way, so I'm pretty keen to take it. Yeah, here we go. So Chasey's Drove continues that way. We're now heading this way, back towards Glastonbury direction. Look at that, <laughs> stretching out as far as you can see. Not bad. trouble with these waterways is they just get full of trash. I don't know what the flip that is. Some kind of suitcase, maybe some buried treasure in there. <laughs> we get bottles and plastic bags and they're so harmful for the wildlife. Look what I found. Alpacas. <gasps> Look at this stuff, lovely. <laughs> hey guys. What's up? Yes, here we are. So we finally reached this junction and uh, this will take us into the residential areas of Glastonbury back onto the A39. So Black Pit Lane comes out further there or down there. That's where we would have come up had we found the footpath. But no worries, we forged our new way along the drove road. Let's head on into Glastonbury now. Guaranteed I'm gonna get lost, but if I can find the high street, I'll be all right. So be prepared for people and uh, buildings. <laughs> Subway, let's see if we can go this way. So that's the main road. We're just gonna head underneath it. There's some of their key sights to see in the area. I think we're gonna head left on this roundabout. So I'm kind of just following my nose now to find the main high street. I'm pretty sure I basically just have to keep going straight and I'll stumble upon it. We will see lots of guessing today. <laughs> the origin of the name Glastonbury is currently unclear but the first records of the settlement appear during the 7th and 8th centuries when it was called Glestingerberg. Part of the name is definitely Anglo-Saxon, but the jury's still out. In the centre is the Market Cross, erected in 1846, which replaced an earlier statue dating to the 16th century. Glastonbury is regularly described as a New Age community and attracts many visitors with New Age and Neo-Pagan beliefs. The town and surrounding area is notable for its place in countless myths and legends, such as those concerning the Holy Grail, King Arthur, and the flowering of a walking stick. There's a real hodgepodge of interesting stores on the main street, boasting woodwork, books, incense, therapies, healing stones, and so much more. I popped into a couple and noted the consistent themes of dragons, prayer bowls, and Buddhas. Tucked away just off the main road is the Church of St John the Baptist, dating to the 15th century and described as one of the most ambitious parish churches in Somerset. With a bit of time to spare, I decided to pop into Glastonbury Abbey, one of the most visited historical sites in the area. Hello. Hiya. Yeah. Um, just a ticket for one, please. Okay, 750 then. Thank you. Thank you. Just on from the main desk is a museum rich in artefacts from the monastery, which was founded in the 7th century and later added to in the 10th century. Much of the abbey was destroyed in a major fire in 1184, but by the 14th century, after being rebuilt, it was one of the most powerful monasteries in England. The abbey was pulled down during the dissolution of the monasteries during the reign of King Henry VIII, who created a set of administrative and legal processes during 1536 and 1541. Basically, he sought to bring down any religious sites in England, Wales and Ireland. It's pretty incredible to be here actually, walking within the walls that still stand. I don't know a huge amount off the top of my head about this place. Let's see what we can learn. 
During its heyday, the Abbey controlled much of the surrounding land and was instrumental in major drainage projects on the Somerset levels. In the 14th century, only Westminster Abbey was more richly endorsed and appointed, so naturally the abbot had great wealth, which was invested in the abbot's house. All that remains now is the abbot's kitchen, one of the best preserved medieval kitchens in Europe. It would have had a large fireplace in each corner, and the current preserved state is decked out to look as it would have done when it was used, with pots and pans, herbs and fruit, and a large oak table right in the middle. The walls buzzed with atmosphere of days long since past. Medieval kitchen garden. Oh nice. It's growing the sorts of things that they'd grown in the 1300s. Obviously, the original gardens would have been bigger than this, but it's likely they would have contained wheat, beans, barley, peas and oats, alongside salads, root vegetables and plenty of herbs. Nearby there's also an orchard, supplying apples, damsons, pears and much more. I like how you can see the layout of where the buildings would have been. They put in these rocks just to give you a better picture of the scale of this whole abbey. It's massive. So there we are then, right back where we started at the beginning and the end of our tour around Glastonbury Abbey. What an incredible place, the atmosphere is beyond words. And actually this brings us to the end of our walk today. So I'm literally about a couple of minutes on the road from the car. So I'll just follow that road all the way back to my car and then we'll begin the journey home. But can I just say, what an amazing place to end today's little walk. You know, I had no idea what it was gonna be like. We made it work in the end. We started with the highs of Glastonbury Tour and we finished here, just, just here. <laughs> That's all I have to say, it has been amazing. Thank you so much for journeying with me today around Glastonbury and the Somerset levels. It's been wonderful to share it with you. And until next time folks, enjoy your adventures and stay wild. <laughs>